Where do you want me? Anywhere you want. Um, the podium. Where, where you're comfortable. And so we want to take minutes. Go so we'll jump to the occasion. Okay. Paul. Okay, he doesn't want to take minutes. I'll take minutes. Angela, please. What, what is the reason? I, 
I work with people from ADA all the time, and normally they give us a list of what, what the problem is when you work with Cal OSHA or with anybody like that. Right. They specifically tell you what's wrong with the roof. Well, I can tell you, I couldn't get into it. I want her name. Well, we, we've had more than one complaint about the cleaning room. The initial issue was the lack of airflow in the room and the lack of physical access into the room. We initially made the recommendation, actually one of my staff members did come out here and looked at both meeting rooms to see what was occurring. And at that time, um, she actually took some pictures. Um, she didn't stay for the meetings, but she checked out both of the rooms. And we did agree that there were some issues with the room downstairs, and that's why we asked for the meeting room to be moved. Okay, so I, I, I was in the receipt of the letter that you wrote that said that the room was okay. And since then, you've changed your opinion of that room, but you've never told us why. You act, in, the, in the first letter, you actually specified the minor changes we had to make. And then there, were some there was no other communication from your office to us at all. There were some additional changes that needed to be made that were requested to be removed from the letter to protect the confidentiality of the individual making the request. The Department on Disability never recommended a HEPA filter. That was um, raised to us by um, Mr. Handel and Mr. Donovan during the site visit. And it was agreed to that it would be tried out. We were told that it's not a big deal. We can get the filter. We'll do the filter. It's not a big deal. Um, apparently that has been in emails that I've received, it's been said that my department and that I personally have required for the data council to do that. That's not true. Usually, when our department makes recommendations specifically for physical changes in the rooms or to city facilities, we actually have a fund annually in order to make those physical alterations. So removing removing the the riser in this room and putting new tiles down, our department actually paid for that because that's what needed to be done in this room to make it more accessible. You still haven't answered my question. The question is... The airflow in that room is not is inappropriate for what needs to be done in that room. The path of travel in that room is not accessible to individuals who use different types of devices. Why the room is inaccessible. 
Now, if you're telling us that this room is a better airflow than downstairs, you are completely misguided, and we'll do an air test to prove it. You haven't done any air tests. There's three ventilation doors downstairs, two leading to the outside, that'll give you a whole lot better than what we're dealing with here. You recommended taking out the barriers. You recommended taking out the chairs. This neighborhood council has over $7,000 in surplus funds we could have put forward to have it done. We've been waiting since that meeting all the way back that many months. You can't tell me it takes GSD six months, seven months to give us a cost estimate. If you would have given us the letter like you promised, we would have been able to go out and cost it out ourselves and been able to work it out in funding as well. I have a question. Um, we can open those sliding doors and make this wide open to the outside. And, and given the difficulty of access, physical access, for those of us who are disabled downstairs, why are you guys fighting this? I don't get it. Because, Ron, to be quite honest with you, we had to pick you up out of your chair and move your chair into the elevator. You couldn't get in here tonight. Right. You'll get in downstairs if we move the barriers and move the chairs a whole lot easier than you can get up here. Because well, you proved tonight that you couldn't get your chair up here without well, us helping you well, move your chair. Well, my other scooter I did, and if I back in, I'm trying to do it. But the other thing I'm looking at is there's so much more access for the public here and so much more comfortable and conducive for them to come that in, in the interest of transparency alone, this is a much better room. My, my issue is not... Go ahead, Tom.
my issue is still the same. You still have not given us a list of what it is you want to correct. I don't have a list on me, sir. It's with Mr. Brill, who has been done, and he's not here tonight. Otherwise, he should be so able to do that. He has the list that you gave him, but you don't keep a copy? I didn't okay. give him a list. I, we spoke about it, and he took notes during the meeting as to what needed to be done. So you spoke about it to him? With everybody. Everybody was in was part of the discussions where he was taking notes. Mm -hmm. So don't. Mr. Handel, Mr. Donovan, myself. He, Mr. Handel, I mean, Mr. Donovan just gave you the letter. Just read it. Let him I know what I said in my letter. And it was to allow you right now to do it. If it wasn't effective, so then we, it wasn't effective. Here's my question. So since that letter you say has been removed or withdrawn or taken away, you have not the words of the letter that takes that thing away. That was sent. Would, would you, have, you gentlemen have it? You don't have to follow the letter that was sent to you. No, I got two letters. We have two letters. We've been waiting for letters from you for months. months, and Jeff Grill keeps telling me you're going to write a letter, but you're consistently no, out of town, we and sent, you're going to do it when you get back, and you never get a letter. I will go back in my emails, and I will resend the redacted letter that was sent we to have, you. We have to go back to redacted letter. That's we, the letter. We I don't, don't understand have the, what We don't have the letter with what it is you're claiming the problems are there to be resolved. We've been asking for that right now, for months it's, and months Right now, months. It's, your, it's your error, it's your filter system. It's your, so, it's, it's your ventilation system okay. in that room. So I, and I'm not willing to really go back and rehash all of this. Great. And we have made our determination from our so, department. So are you going to give it to us in writing then? I'll ask letter. Mr. Brill to send to you. Your determination letter will give us I, I've already sent it that. A question? No. I'm not sure what you're actually asking. I will have Mr. Grill send you. Somebody says, you can't use this, you can't do this. They give you a list telling you why, specifically. So, I mean, I work with I don't have an OSHA list. And we did not, I, I have been doing my job since 2012. I have worked with our personnel department. We have provided HEPA filters for city employees on numerous occasions. There are times when it's going to work, times it's not going to that room is not a valid room to have a HEPA filter. It's way too large. So if you the room, want, the room is way the room is the way too large. The room is way too large oh, for a HEPA filter different. that is going the to be The air scrubber effective. that's in there is good for four thousand square feet. So, so I mean, you're you're talking to somebody who actually knows about ADA and air movement, air sampling, mold remediation, the whole nine yards. So. I've been trained. I'm a certified indoor air quality expert. Okay, where's your report? I didn't do a report. I was waiting for yours. I want to respond I don't to your have an report. Air quality report. Excuse me, I'm a little confused also. We yeah. had the first letter on March 18th, which I just read. And there was a second letter. That, that was the out. redacted letter. And that was a redact. Well, it had stuff taken out. There was no right. actual redactions in it. That says the same thing. The neighbor council can continue the meetings at this time at the regular meeting location. Okay, so that's. That's the, is there another letter for you no. since then? No. You, you've not sent a, a letter that says that this there, is no longer there, operative? There was no letter that was sent to the board, I don't believe, the, the other than having the meeting room, remove, have them move the meeting room. Right. So, it, so let me go back again. The other issue is that if it's not an effective accommodation for a person with a disability, it's not effective. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what expenses you go to. If the individual with a disability comes back to me and goes, thank you for trying all of these options, but it doesn't work. This is going to work for me, this other accommodation. We're then going to go back and look at that accommodation. The issue for the city of Los Angeles to be able to defend this, which is what the situation is right now, that I have to work with the city attorney's office to make sure that what we're doing is defensible by the city if we do get sued or complaints filed against us for failures to accommodate. And I don't have a reason from your board as to why you could not move into this room other than we like it cozy. We've not been officially informed by anybody. That we you have. have. You had a letter back in November. I, we had a letter from a city attorney. You're you an ADA certified. You had a letter. Are you from an ADA certified? Person? Mr. Handel has a letter from me as the ADA compliance officer back in November, and I'm only speaking loud because of the I'm not yelling. Okay. The I just want to make no, I want to make sure that you know I realize that my voice went higher when the the air went off. The fact of the matter is, I gave a letter in November indicating to move the room. 
all I got, and I didn't get an answer have, back. Do you have that letter? We don't have that letter. And it was resent in January. We don't have a letter. You do. But that letter, I will I will forward all of those emails I, that I have those letters. I, I'd love to see the letter. That letter, that letter, that letter was distributed at a meeting. Letter. It was distributed as a board meeting and also distributed among the meeting materials. But so, you might back in your material from that. From the, 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 the discussion right now is there's no reason that you can't meet in this room. Unless you can give me a reason that is that is valid, COSI doesn't work for the ADA. It has to be too much money or too much administrative effort. I thought we just had a uh, disabled person that couldn't get in. No, here. With help. So Did then the other, help? well, the but other choice. Help anybody get into the room. So now the other choice is now that we know that, I'm sorry, I don't know your names, Ron. That Ron has an issue with both rooms. Then my recommendation would be to move it off. Actually, so give us that. Give us that in writing, please. Would you like that? If you want me uh, to put you writing, you want everything in writing. Just to let you know, I have much less of an issue with this room than the one downstairs. Yeah. I can't believe the one downstairs at all. So really, this is the board, and these are these are your stakeholders, and I don't know. I mean, what do stakeholders feel about it? I would say that there's no ventilation in here. It's hot. I don't know if there's any air conditioning, and it smells. I don't know if you can smell it, but it smells in here. Yes, it's not pleasant. So I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I would like to, I would like to get us to move on and get a look. We, we know what the issue is here at this point, and what I'm going to recommend is that we are going to request in writing, in full, a complete report on downstairs and why it is no, it is not accessible for any, whether it's physically accessible or air quality or whatever, okay? And if we ask, we write and we ask for a complete report from the department, from the city attorney and from Ms. Kaufman, a complete written report to be brought back to this board within the next 15 days. Well, one last clarification also, because I, you did send a letter in November, and, uh, but then you said, and then said that, that and recommending that we move. But then you sent the March 18 ones, so and those did not recommend that we move. So, so let, let me, let, let, excuse me, let So we felt it reasonable to assume that the March 18 letter superseded the other letter because the other letter said we recommend you move, and the March 18 letter said you could stay. Okay, so let me go back. The March, the November letter indicated the recommendation to move your meeting out of that first floor meeting. I and clearly in that letter it states, if there's any reason that you are unable to move the room, please provide that to my department in writing. I need to have something in writing as to why it was not, there was no ability to move up to this, the meeting room up here. I received nothing, absolutely no response from your board. In January, another letter, uh, one of my staff was contacted, and we set up a meeting to meet with the board and with the individual that had the request to discuss whether or not something could be done in that room to make it accessible. That was at the request of the board members. That was fine, we came in, we discussed, we looked through the whole thing, I did measurements of things to make sure things were, were accessible. And at that point, with Mr. Handel telling us that there was no big deal about purchasing a HEPA filter and we'd be happy to do it, and with the individual that made the request willing to try it out to see if we could make that room work, I wrote the letter indicating that this is what's agreed to, and this is, you know, in order to allow you right now to keep using them, but we had to revisit it to make sure it was effective. And when I came back from vacation, I had emails indicating that it wasn't effective, and the individual still wanted the meeting room moved. So we went ahead and asked to have the meeting room moved. That is where we are today. That was the recommendation from my department. What's happened after the recommendation, whether or not people take our department's recommendations or not, again, I have to be able to defend the city if we have complaints filed. I did not have anything in writing from this board indicating why they were not able to move. The cost of this move is negligible. We have an obligation in the city to make things accessible. 
Maybe it's just for one person, maybe it's for 10 people. But we have an obligation. And as our community, the disability community grows and grows, it's making it that much more difficult for people to, able, to be able to attend meetings that are not fully accessible, both physically and programmatically. But Jay, didn't you send her an email in January? I sent a lot of emails. The, e only, e the only reason I have for not moving this room was that we like it cozy downstairs. No, I think that's a very bad portrayal of my email, quite frankly. I think what it said was it's not fair to the board, the board members, and the stakeholders because, as you can see, I've got half my board sitting facing us. And that's not how a board is supposed to be interacting with stakeholders. And that was made very clear in the email. So please, if you're going to make statements, don't be inflammatory. Let's be really clear about the statements. Okay? And the statement was that this is not fair to the public. That so, these people have to be looking at us, and they can't actually face the public that elected them to be able to work with them. And That's what the email said. And there's also a problem with the dais that was And at that time, we also had a problem. And again, we can't fit 15 people across here. Okay, it just doesn't fit. So that was also spelled out. It also out. doesn't fit downstairs. That was also spelled out. Well, it will with the accommodation when we take the wall down if you ever give us a letter telling us what it is and if Jeff Brill ever gives us cost estimates and from GSD and we can actually get the work done. But we're scared to death to do any work because you guys can turn around at any given time and pull a rug out from any of us for anything. So I did not why, 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 I, spend, I absolutely did why not spend dollars for anything when at a whim, anybody can turn around and say, nope, I don't like it, go somewhere else. Donna, go ahead. Um, my name is Donna Bichos. And um, I just want to, to ask you, how far did you go? Can you speak louder over here? I can't hear you. Um, the question is, how far would we go to accommodate requests? When do you consider? That the requests are not reasonable anymore. Well, Meaning, um, you just said you have to protect the city not to be sued, but the city can be sued like thousands of times and win in the court because the, the requests are not reasonable. So, how far would you go? Because so, uh, if, yeah, if I can just, uh, when I turn uh, my memory back, uh, the first request about this room was because the room downstairs doesn't fit in a people. It wasn't because of the, we had the minutes of that meeting. We had on the agenda the request to move upstairs, not because of disability issues, but rather because we couldn't fit enough people downstairs when we have like very important topics, which we did with a lot of school and some other topics, when we used this room basically to fit all the people, and we had fire departments over right here. So in the meantime, once we got it against here, in the meantime, we progressed to disability is issues, which I'm not questioning right now, but I'm questioning is like your willingness just to say that someone is not happy with something, and do you have independent person who basically investigates if the request is helpful and reasonable? So we, we do the investigation of our department. We are responsible for that for all city departments. We are entitled to complaint okay. or request. Um, a lot of departments, especially when there's no cost to request, they, they accommodate by themselves. This, in my opinion, should have been one of those times that it should have easily been accommodated by moving the room and then pulling people in and trying to figure out how we can make the, the first floor more accessible than it already is. Um, I have several concerns with the first floor um, with where the wheelchair seating is, there's only one means of emergency egress in that room. That's another concern that I have. And so people who are in wheelchairs or using any kind of devices are not going to be able to evacuate like able-bodied people. So that, that's always something that's in the back of my mind when I look at meeting spaces. For that room downstairs, the biggest barriers right now, I will tell you, are is the separation between um, where the board members seat, sit and where the, the audience sits. That does need to be removed. That is That will allow for um, Ron to be able to move much more freely in that room and to be able to use any of the exits 
for entrances. We still can't get yeah. it. I have a suggestion to solve this, and maybe we can go on on it. How about if uh, we get an architect mm -hmm. just to come and do evaluation and present the plan to your department to see how we can solve it? Absolutely. And then how about we get uh, somebody from uh, air quality management to come and check the filter, yeah. and then we present that to your department. And then when we have the plans ready, I don't know if I'm mistaken, I can here we have $7,000 uh, budget. So we can spend that $7,000 budget on an architect, plan, presentation, air quality, present it to you, and then you can move on. So then to the first floor, we move on. If not, we stay here. How about that? You buy it? So I, would, I would like to see the list. Let, let me, let and, me get, and, I, and I don't, honestly, I don't This is not very concerning. Here, here's the issue. You have an architect. You claim that the November letter supersedes the March letter. No, no, no. I sent another letter. I, I actually, I'll take that back. I had made the recommendation to Dunn. And I'll go back through my emails as to who was on it that we needed to move. We have requested numerous times for a list. Okay. It's not that hard to give me a list. I mean, you're not, you're not any different than a Cal OSHA inspector or an ADA compliant officer. You ask them for a list, I get one in two days. Not a problem. I will get to the list from Jeff. Uh, no. Uh, I don't have it, so I have okay, to ask okay. Jeff for the we got list. It. We I got don't it. have we any other way to get it. And, and I think you had some great points. So you know, you what, I, what I like to do is, is we're already into our second meeting time, and we still have two more people <clears> to hear from, one of which got stuck forever in the traffic, and I feel bad dragging around here. But, Anyway, so let's see if we can, uh, we, know, we know what we're asking from you. Uh, we'd like to see that like forthwith. Uh, and then we'll take it from there and you know, we can all have that discussion as a board, you know, where we take it from there. And Mr. We'll Chair, uh, so when we get to the exhaustive metrics, I would like to make a report about how it is that we got to the exhaustive metrics. Okay, well, let's, let's have Gracie uh, from the department come up because again, we're cutting into the time of our real board meeting. Uh, but this is important, and I think we need to get through some of the important stuff just to flush out the yuck. And everybody is welcome to email me or call me if you have any specific questions. I'm happy to talk to anybody. There are most likely people in this room that have hidden disabilities. So if there's anything that my department can possibly do to assist you, um, be here for that as well. But again, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So I, I'll give you my number, but you can also call 311 and ask for me and they'll transfer you. My direct number is 213-202-2752. Two, and honestly, we are here to try and make this be as successful as possible. And we are willing to work with the board to try and get that first floor meeting room into a state, a situation where it can be utilized and that it's going to be more accessible for, for everybody. Can we get a letter that we can share with the entire board and post for the public to see? Is that something that's possible, or how does that work here? Just about what the recommendations are. Just to that's be what we're for. Okay. So, okay. But, but that's a letter that we can post to the public and share. That's not against confidentiality or anything like that. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And, and I'll just say this, having taken the ADA training in animal services, many months back, it's a good train. And it's something that everybody should at least one time see and hear because it is a good train. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number two, discussion with the representative. We have the general manager, Grace here. Thank you so much. We also have Stephen Box over holding the wall up for us. Uh, it's an old building, so someone has to hold the wall up. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I'll keep it very short. The, the, I think I'm here to just present on exhaustive efforts and what it is. And the board received an exhaustive efforts letter on June 3rd. We actually have copies of it in the back. Okay. Sorry. There's copies in the back. You actually, the board will also receive it in their package um, for the next meeting, too. Um, and it, it basically, the, the board was putting exhaustive efforts. Let me just tell you about exhaustive efforts. Who, Asker? Is that it? Uh, yeah. uh, to begin with, the, the, the um, plan for citywide system neighbor councils um, allows the department to put neighbor councils in exhaustive efforts uh, in order to sort out a problem. And this is the situation here um, on March 2nd. 
there was uh, an email issued to the board that talked about the location um, uh, of the meeting should be moved up here and, uh, and not held in the office. And on May 10th, there was uh, the Planning and Land Use Management Committee meeting um, violated this directive that um, Department of Disability and um, City Attorney provided to the, to the, um, uh, the board. So what we did was we put folks in the, the Labor Council to the Austin Bed first, and I, I put out a work plan. I think some folks were confused, and I apologize for the confusion exactly what was included in its Austin Bed first because it's so different from depending on the Labor Council situation. Um, we, we can take over like the operations of the board. We can completely freeze funding 100% um, except for meeting operations. And, and because of the end of this school year and because we knew um, uh, there's a, an important time for the board to, to spend down their funds, we didn't completely freeze funding. Um, we uh, uh, only have uh, to review the agendas for the board. And if any committees are going forward, which the board can't hear any of their issues, because the board always has jurisdiction for everything that a committee looks at. So if the if the board didn't have the ability to look at it and have to go to committee, then we would we were fine with that because we know there's community issues that are going forward. We know that plenty of land use. So um so. Um, so, uh, what, what I provided to you is our work plan. Our goal is to just sort out five things. To resolve the ADA meeting location issue, which are, we're, you know, we're on our way to doing. Um, if you, on May 10th, we need to re-agenda to re-hear any of the issues in the plum committee. Um, that that we, we need to do as well. Um, while we were reviewing agendas for the plum committee um, a few weeks back, we noticed that there was some deficiencies in the agenda um, in terms of um, a, a specificity of the Act. So um, we wanted to make sure that uh, that training for how to write agendas that comply with the Brown Act is there. We want to make sure that all board members have completed their ethics funding and code of conduct training. And Stephen will have some of that information with you as well. And um, we also noticed that when the regular agenda was provided to us, that um, the appointment of the committee chairs was not in line with your actual standing rules um, and your bylaws. So we wanted to make that correction update. Um, and once that's done, you guys are out of exhaustive efforts. We did a three month timeline, it doesn't have to be three months. Is this can be done in a month. Um, and again, we're here to support and just to make sure that the neighborhood council um, is in line with city policy procedures and, uh, and work collaboratively with uh, the neighborhood council. Uh, so, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Mr. Gallagher, any requests? I'd like to just to bring, there's new people here that don't know about what happened and how it happened. And I want to let everybody know. Just in case there are under some different uh, understanding as to how we got here today. Can we think about 10 minutes? That's up to your chair if you have that time. Sure. Well, how, how about this before you do that? Because that sounds like it's a report. Is there anybody who has any questions for the general manager? John, let's do questions and then you can. <coughs> You promised okay. me answers today about our funds. Uh, I haven't received any answers. I'm not able, still as a treasurer of this neighborhood council, I'm not able, and I wasn't able to spend any money for a while. The department didn't respond to my question as to if we pay the bills. The very important check that I was sent out to bounce, and I still don't have the update on, uh, on the so, can you answer my question, please? Well, actually, Mario can answer your question, and I've asked Mario to respond to you on that. So, and that's what I said, that you know, that Mario will be responding to you. Yes, very specific. So, still no response, and we are going to this since May 3rd with the funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Well, from the emails that I've seen between you both, um, there seems they're he's responding to a lot of your questions, and then I think you have additional questions on top of that. So I am happy to go back to uh, and speak with Mario, make sure that he provides you the answers. My understanding is he's working on giving you any outstanding responses to your questions. Okay, so as a general manager, and uh, we don't know why Union Bank account is frozen, and why we don't have the access for over twenty thousand dollars. You don't have the answer. To that. I I can't tell you what Union Bank specifically does because they have issues. They froze you guys because you guys had a uh, you spent um, initially you spent no that's the big election that's the big right. right. I'm talking about big pay. Because as you know, there is a, a daily limit on that card, and they're not able to say anything about thousand dollars to the P cards. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you is why the bank account is frozen. Why am I not able to pay the bills? So and Mar you are not doing it as well. Right. So Mario emailed you to let you know that we've been trying to be in contact with Union Bank. Our rep at Union Bank has mm -hmm. left, and we have a new rep who is not being responsive to us. So. We are trying to the answers. Yes. So and we're trying to respond. We're trying to get a response, but it's you know we can't even get it. I can't even tell you specifically why the bank is not not doing this. And just to let you know, we are looking for another bank just because of this big issue that that yes, but you see that takes like 30 seconds to write in an email to me, and we can have like all this madness about responses. It just takes very working but We are having the problems. And the answer to the question, did you pay the bill, is yes or no. Do you have the confirmation? Here is the confirmation number. I, you know, I'm not the person that requests like, please, thank you, and this and that, and all. You know, just very short answer. But um, I will ask my okay, and we do have that budget on the agenda, so we will discuss this first. Okay. So thank you. Any other questions for Gracie? So, again, like Jana, we have issues that are not answered in a timely manner. So I'm not sure if that's the, the way Dunn does things. They, they wait three or four days or, or longer, especially with, with uh, the agenda for Plum. It's an awful long time to just... And instead of telling me what they were wrong with the agenda at Plum, they tell me one little thing, I change, they tell me another little thing, I change it. And they tell me another little thing, and then I change everything, and they didn't answer for 14 hours or whatever that number was. So, would it be uh, more prudent that you guys just tell me what's wrong with the agenda in your eyes, all in one email, so it can all be corrected once? I'm assuming you guys have a set standard of what you want. But instead, it was piecemeal. I was being nickel and dime for my time and nickel and dime for, my, for what we were doing. So it's either you guys are not doing your job uh, efficiently or you're not being the leader you're supposed to be for us. I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure what the, what the deal is. If there was 10 things wrong with my agenda, why do they want to tell me 10, why do they want to tell me 10 different times a little piece of it instead of just telling me all of it at once? Right. Well, you know what? I actually have the agendas that you sent in, and um, and my understanding from staff is that they did tell you what was wrong with it. And they only they, told me they told me little pieces. Well, it was my understanding was they told you what was wrong with it, and you provided little piece updates, and and then we tried to work with you and on Saturday, the Saturday to respond to to your agenda that you sent to us Friday for a Tuesday meeting. So, so you know, you have to also understand that we have 96 neighbor councils in the system, and how we are many, trying. How many neighbor councils do you have in exhaustive efforts? So, <coughs> it doesn't matter how many have in exhaustive efforts because we have a lot of requests from us, particularly at the end of the fiscal year. So, so for us to respond to you already three times on a Friday and a Saturday, except for an email that you provided to us on the agenda on Friday. Um, I think that's actually being pretty responsive, particularly our staff responding to you on a Saturday as well. And so if you could, we could work together to, to actually get this, move this forward, I'm happy to do that, and staff's happy to do that, but you also have to understand, you know, we are small staff, 96 neighbor councils, end of the fiscal year, and everyone is asking for stuff. Um, but like I said, we're, we're here to try to collaborate, make sure that we get you out of the office as soon as possible. And um, 
And I think that providing you with now some templates of how to do agendas and to provide you the training how to do agendas to satisfy the Brown Act. Um, yes. What happens to our 2016 unspent funds? So um, the council member did put in a motion to remove $21,585.49. Um, however, um, right now, what we show that we, that we will have currently is $7,129.76. So we'll work with the council member to um, adjust that number based on however much is that. That, that's so, the question. So currently, it's an age rate. Jana contacted me and told me that the last deposit of 7200 and change actually got put into the old account, okay. not into the new account. So there's at least $14,000 14, and change. The new account and $7,000 on the old account that right. was supposed to be closed by now. And I kept asking and asking, why do you transfer the money to the old account? Because the motion was specifically stating our new account. Yeah. So that's, that's fine, we'll, we'll sort that out and we won't lose the funds. <coughs> You said so once we take care of the room issue and the agenda issues and all that, then we can be taken off and leave. That's correct. But I had an email conversation with you today because right now we have several active complaints against one of our board members, including one for discrimination. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, Don has not acted on these yet. Yes. And you said as long as these complaints are active, you're not going to take us off. So, actually, let me let me re clarify what I said. Um, I didn't say if they're active. I stated that if these discrimination comes, so this exhaustive effort plan is based on the information that we have right now um, about exhaustive efforts. Why you guys were put in? Um, we did receive complaints that, that are alleging harassment and discrimination. That we must have a work with the city attorney's <coughs> office and possibly personnel department to look at. If they move forward, if they're, if they're deemed valid and they move forward, then yes, you will make, remain in exhaustive efforts while they're being resolved. And they and the personnel department, if they do an investigation, it, it might it is likely that they will use a third party vendor to do the investigation. And if they do that, um, they will likely charge the, the neighborhood council for that investigation. So let me see if we can understand this. We have one board member, and somebody makes a complaint to them about discrimination. <coughs> the neighborhood council then, just because of this one person and this one complaint, the neighborhood council then gets placed into exhaustive efforts. And not only that, the neighborhood council has to pay for the investigation of the exhaustive evidence. And the, the, this the is discrimination that's, complaint, not the exhaustive evidence. You said, it's, you it's, said it's, investigation of exhaustive yeah, evidence. Yeah, it's not the, evidence. the discrimination complaint. Yeah. So one person discriminates, one person makes a complaint, and the entire neighborhood council is then punished mm -hmm. and placed in exhaustive efforts and forced to pay for the investigation. And wouldn't you say that, that this discourages a victim from speaking up because they don't want to hurt their neighborhood council? You know, I, I don't know the situation in terms of exactly what will happen with the payment. If personnel is able to actually do the investigation themselves, it's likely you will not be charged. And this is, again, if it's determined that it's actual discrimination complaint that must be investigated. But that could take six months. No, no, they're gonna, they're likely to know within the next two weeks whether or not it's gonna go forward. Okay, right. so it's only a two week, during that two weeks, no matter it what, go if it's a discrimination complaint, the yeah. neighborhood council is placed in exhaustive efforts. Basically kind of a receivership, you're done. And just because of one complaint by one victim yeah. toward one board member. So let's do timeline clarification. If you weren't in exhaustive efforts and we got a discrimination harassment complaint, you would not go into exhaustive efforts unless it is determined by city attorney and personnel department that they must investigate. At <coughs> that moment in time, then you go into exhaustive efforts. But because you guys are in exhaustive efforts, it doesn't really matter right now. Has that been determined yet? 
of the city attorney and personnel. Letters going forward. No, I said that will be happening in the next two Because weeks. the complaints were sent to you before we were in the exhaustive levels. The complaints were sent in on May 31. There was a series of, we've got multiple different ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mailed them all into you. They, well, they, well, they, you they, they, yours is not the only complaint. Okay, so but the ones I mailed to you were sent in on May 31. Yeah. They were sent to me and I forwarded them to you. <coughs> so, so the next, next two weeks, weeks yeah, the next two weeks we will know whether or not they'll be going yeah. so, What about the, and I forget the code, it says you're supposed to forward all complaints about our board to us within five days, and we've never received one in writing. Well, actually, the grievance um, ordinance doesn't say that. It says only if it's a valid grievance does it go to the board. Actually, that's not Under the city of LA plan for the citywide system of neighborhood councils, Article 6, Paragraph 4, it says all complaints of any nature shall be delivered by gun to the affected neighborhood council against which the complaint is made within five business days of receipt of the complaint. All complaints of any nature. <coughs> but that's if it's a but that's if it's a complaint that's to be resolved by the neighborhood council. Pardon me? That's if it's a complaint that is say that. Well, that's 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 that. That. Doesn't say that. Doesn't say it's that. an interpretation. It, it also doesn't preclude the department or any other di division from initiating the exhaustive efforts. I don't think that's the question. That, the question is why is it why was it never forwarded to the neighborhood council never received in violation of the plan? You, you yeah, are point say. of order, can I get the speaker's name? Yeah, I'm Darren Martinez with the city attorney's office. Oh, you're there. This is um so let me, and, and you guys I want to kind of Good segue. This. I want to wrap yeah, let me wrap this up too because I know you're going late and I have I think we have time for you. I'll um, and so let me let me just kind of I don't know if you need Gracie for anything else, but I I do I am short on time as well. Um well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're here to I'm Darren Martinez. You're here to help us, so Yes, I'm I'm here to help you. So let me let me try to get okay. and, and after listening kind of to everything that's going on, let's Let's look, okay, I understand from Angela, like what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what we're doing with respect to the room. Whether we have an issue that we need to move to a different location in the near future, or whether the room downstairs can be fixed so that it's accommodated, we'll be able to address that through Angela shortly. And she's gonna follow up with you and give you the final details so you understand where we are with respect to the room. The department is here to assist you so that we make sure that we're using the appropriate facilities so that we, that they assist you with doing your agendas um, with any other questions that you have about how to operate the, um, the meetings. Um, it's, rather, it's rather simple and it's not that complex. Um, I understand that you disagree with some of the recommendations that may be coming forward from the Department of Disability. But remember, the Department of Disability is the city agency that makes these recommendations. Uh, well, you know, they make, now, we've already talked to her. Our concern is why we don't have the grievances that you've been supposedly getting for a year. You, for you do plates. Complaints. Yes. You, you are aware of the You are aware of the have complaint. You, have, have any of you, have any, have you received any you're of this? You're aware of the no. complaint why we are moving the location. You, that, you that, no, 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 no. We're, you're talking about another subject. You're talking about the ADA complaint. Right. We're talking about all the other grievances that you have against us. Uh, the other complaints. Complaints. Well, the complaints, I mean, a word about the complaints aren't against the board. I mean, you have lots of complaints going back and forth between people. They're, they're not complaints against the board. I mean, they're not complaints that are against the neighborhood council. So, you're saying, so they're so you're other saying than this ADA one, there are no other complaints against the neighborhood council? Because I know that's false. I've seen some of them. What what I I mean I'll, I'll go back and look at it, but I think you have, that, you have complaints have. you have complaints going back and forth between individuals. No. Long, long before <coughs> long before you got complaints from the board against a specific individual, you had complaints get from that specific individual against everybody, the entire board and people. Well, there, there were more against individuals, but there so, were. And have you notified all those individuals? Did you give it to them within five days? Or whether, it's not. Know? It's not a. It, it's being addressed. That's why it raises the wait, ADA wait, issue. Being addressed is not an answer. Being addressed is, I will get to when we get to it. You've had them for more than a month, than six months, right? Um, some of them, yes. 
and, and there's no reason why we shouldn't have gotten them. Because they initially dealt with ADA issues, so they're no, no, investigated no, that's by... That's not that true. That's before August 28th last year. And that's why we have, we have a public request that request request there. If, okay, send, send me the complaint that you're referring to that goes against the board. I don't have board. You, you got it. I don't, I'm not aware of a complaint against your <clears> board <throat> except for this issue about your meeting space and meeting location. Okay. The rest are against individuals. So the rest are complaining I mean, against the actions never, of individuals. The complaints are about, have you notified them? There's those matters that need to be investigated will be investigated, but there's no jurisdiction to handle complaints against individuals. If I file a complaint against you that says I don't like you, okay, yeah. nothing happens. Yeah, I don't like you. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a complaint. So, so now let me ask you a question. So if there's no, if there's no mechanism for individual issues, we have an NPG that's been stopped because somebody claim that a board member should have recused themselves and had a conflict of interest on a school MPG. We were never notified that the MPG was held. We found out through third party sources that it was held. And we were never notified that, and the person was never notified that he potentially had a recusal issue, which on its face and surface was completely false. And as you know, as a city attorney, you advise regarding recusals, but you don't demand because you are an advisory uh, board to our board. So then why is it that this board and that school got screwed out of the money because it's been held up as a complaint against a board member who should have been told to recuse who should have been told to recuse. It's also, but it's a communication, yeah. there's a communications it's issue. It's also a complaint and, against the board that we should have been valid. Well, well, no, and no, let me, because there's, there's different, there's different kinds of complaints or issues. You know, there's, right. there's matters that arise under state law that have to be addressed a certain way. The way the funding process works is if an issue is brought to the attention of the department, and I, and I understand that this is relatively recent. I don't think that there's been, I don't think that there's been any hold on it for months. I just think that in the processing of, over a month in the processing of paperwork since when it was submitted. Remember, and every neighborhood council right now is throwing all their funding paperwork at the department. Yeah. So what happens way, is it passed on May 9th and it brought downtown a day later. Right. So what happens is if an issue then is brought to the attention of the department, then they'll contact that individual board member to contact our office to resolve whatever it is. There's a there's a conflict or not. We don't necessarily come run to the board with that individual's conflict or explain what that individual may have, but we'll provide them, the department, with advice on whether a conflict existed and it can be funded. So, yeah, but that's not necessarily a board complaint. It deals with the conflict of interest situation that's germane to a specific individual. So we'll provide that individual with advice and let them know whether or not it was in compliance and it could be paid or not. So I mean, I, so, I, so, I, 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 mean so, I was the board member that the conflict of interest was filed against. I never received any communication. I don't think. Through, I, I, think I, I became aware of it today that it was even <coughs> in the part of being processed. Uh, and I'm not going to talk to you about your conflict in no, public. No, I know, but, but I'm saying I wasn't even, I, I think, I, in trans for, for transparency and to give me due process. It's not fair to me to have a complaint and then uh, a funding issue that I proposed that was completely within the legal requirements of the MPG based on my understanding of conflict of interest that I was never even given the opportunity to even say, this is, I, this is, I mean, so that doesn't yeah, seem it just, fair to it me. Just, a, it's just honestly not even at the point where this is being processed. I mean, you know, but it, it, I, became, uh, I became aware of the issue today. I'm sure I'll hear something from the department tomorrow and you'll get an email from me tomorrow that says, what exactly happened, and we'll have a discussion, and then I'll talk with the department, and then it will get resolved. But that's how that's how funding matters kind of work. I mean, it's not we're not going to share a an issue that might pertain to one individual with the entire. Uh, I'm board. not concerned we'll, about. We'll talk, I, I we'll was talk concerned just about. I think it was only brought up just because of the complaints. I was concerned that it might have. I, ne I might have never been even contacted. So I was just concerned it's, about that. It was, it was through hearsay that there was an investigation yeah. going on. I, I, I should be the first I don't person know to why, know. I don't know why I mean, there's I mean, a delay. I think you should know first. I, it would I, be the person accused. Yeah, I, I so. heard of it. I heard of it 
probably an hour before I came into this meeting. So I don't know when came between you and Ben. So, John. Sean, um, I, I don't understand why the racist remarks and discrimination happened in the front of the board, and you are saying and, and putting like an equal something like I don't like someone. That's the complaint against the board. It happened during the board meeting. So you can put it down and say it's like I, somebody I doesn't like someone. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't categorizing any type of existing complaint as being in the nature of, oh, I just don't like someone. I was using that example of, I don't like how you, the tone of voice you speak of me, that every complaint that against an individual, that wasn't the case. There were like what some you're, you're, talking, you're talking about something different. This discrimination, <coughs> harassment, bullying type of investigation complaint, yes, that's, a separate, yes. that's a separate issue. The way bullying, harassment, um, discrimination are evaluated, are, they're looked at by our office in conjunction with the personnel department. We then evaluate what type of work plan to come up with to address the issue. Um, they're very fact intensive, very uh, require a lot of analysis type issues. The example I'm trying to raise of why not every complaint okay, comes to the board or body. The first response well, let me, was let me there finish. was no, there was no problem that was worth investigating, and then a couple of hours later, this version. So never, first okay, place you're, was you're that. Okay, you're not understanding. There's I don't, two, there's, I don't. There's, two, there's, two, there's two very different things here, okay? Bullying, harassment, discrimination. All right, those types of issues or complaints, and there are some that involve this neighborhood council. What our office is doing is we will evaluate those issues in conjunction with the personnel department, and we'll figure out a mechanism for being able to go forward on it. The example that I was trying to use before when I was asked why not all complaints are come to the board is because of the reason that there's not generally a mechanism for resolving complaints against an individual. So if I just say I don't like a person, or a person spoke mean to me during the course of the meeting, that's not a complaint that's resolved. Those types of issues are resolved through the election process. If you don't like an individual, it gets flushed out through the election. You can't just file a complaint and say, I don't like your personality, or I don't like something that you said that may involve like free speech rights. That's very different from discrimination, <coughs> bullying, and harassment. Yes, but you were talking about the same thing. The first response was, uh, there was no reason for complaint. It was denied because it was against the individual. And now you are saying it's like a different fact. So which is it? I filed a complaint. I filed a grievance. I have the email discrimination complaint. I have the email saying that the department decided. Oh, because they're not handled through the brief. Okay, this is I, I get it. Okay, let me know. Let me let me let me let me let me explain. You know, investigate. There, there are, wasn't something there like are, that. That's, that's correct. We can clarify with the department that that's how it happens. If you go to the grievance portal and you file any complaint against an individual, it doesn't. It gets bounced. There's no. That, that's not the way it happens. If it comes, if it's because it doesn't process. The the way grievances are processed, a grievance under the neighborhood council system. It comes back to the board, they appoint an ad hoc grievance panel, that panel makes a determination about what to do, it can then be appealed to a regional grievance panel, okay? That's grievances under the system. That deals for violations of the plan, of the bylaws, and everything else. There's a whole other series of rules and laws that come into play, however. If there's a Brown Act issue, right? Let's say you go file a Brown Act issue through the portal. Brown Act is a state law matter. It's not handled through that grievance process where it comes to the board, they do a grievance, and then can be appealed to the regional grievance panel. There's a mechanism for addressing that through state law, so that goes right away to the board, and the board responds and addresses it. The same thing if there was a Public Records Act request. If you file through the grievance portal that there was a violation of the Public Records Act request, it doesn't come through that process of the grievance panel at the neighborhood council. There's a separate process for dealing with these other legal issues that exist, and that also include those bullying, discrimination, harassment issues. So, we will do better to make sure that when they are explained, that how the process works then for them. 
But here's the thing. This neighborhood council, just so you all know, has never, ever defied Dunn or, or refused to do what Dunn told us. You've heard today the ADA officer issues a recommendation. It is not an order or a directive. The city attorney provides a recommendation. It is not an order or a directive. The only department that can order us to do it is done. And to this day, done has never ordered us not to have our meetings. Point of order. We, we, we need to move forward from here. Why don't we rehash all this again? Because I, there are some people here that don't understand how we got here. And I want to just be sure. Are you sure of that? Because I think most people here don't care about it. Well, that may be your opinion, but I'm going to finish it. And I would ask you not to interrupt me because I'm going as fast as I can. Okay? So anyways, we've never been ordered. We've never defined. And so there should be no reason why we're under exhaustive efforts right now. We have made reasonable accommodations, and our recommendations spent over $1,500 to do it. And when we had the carpets cleaned, we even had them cleaned with a odor free, hypoallergenic, and allergy sensitive product, so there would be no problems. We, but the, the bottom line at the end of the day is that there's no due process. We get placed into the DE, we can't challenge it, we can't appeal it, there's no hearings where we can talk to anybody. It has been impossible for me to talk to Mr. Martinez or Ms. Lou to find out how can we do it. It's, it's basically we're just told what to do, we have no recourse, and then nothing else will be done. That's not fair. That's not due process. This can have, it, 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 what I'm understanding here is Dunk can decide for whatever reason whether they, we want it or not, to place us under exhaustive efforts when we have no recourse. We can't appeal, we can't talk, nothing. But that's not fair. Until we receive this uh, email today, there's never been any kind of email as to what exhaustive efforts are. How do you get in? How do you get out? What do you need to do? We still are. Today is the first time I've ever received anything. There's no documents in the city charter or the or municipal ordinance that say that. Nothing about it. We're supposed to be a neighbor's council. There's a spirit, there's a charter amendment that creates us. We're here to provide access for the city and the public to have a say in city government. Yet this can be just taken away from us without any due process at all. It's not fair. Um, there should be procedures laid out in an ordinance. If, if, if Dunn is going to be doing this across the city, the neighborhood councils, they should lay it all out. This is how we do it. But we, Dunn has never told us we did anything wrong. They've never. They just put us in exhaustive efforts because other recommendations, not orders, recommendations were, were made. So right now, how do we move forward? What should happen? What happened in this case is that we got the recommendations. We moved our meetings up here. And then we got the letter of March 18th saying, if you did this, that, and everything, you could be downstairs. Great. So we were downstairs. And then there was an issue arose about this person making another complaint, which was you know, making false allegations. And so we received an email from the city attorney's office on May 2, saying, I talked to the DOD and they're recommending that you, you have to move the meeting. The city attorney just admitted, he doesn't tell us what to do, he only recommends. We didn't hear anything from them. Our plum committee chairman didn't get that email <coughs> before the meeting. Then two days later, we get an email from Ms. Coffin saying, we need to move tonight's meeting, which is a board meeting, up here. Which we did. But that email did not say that all committee hearings had to be moved up here. He didn't know. So, by mistake, he held a plug meeting downstairs. Where I've had it for seven years. Where, where it's been going on for years and years. Because of that one mistake, even though there was no order from done, it was ambiguous as to what we were going to do, we get placed in the EE again with no due process, no recourse, no appeal. Once. That's not fair. We don't deserve it. We are a good neighbor of council. We need to see the board to be a good neighbor of council. And for one mistake, by one thing, I'll tell you right now, as the vice chair, I didn't even know where the plan meeting was going to be held. I didn't know what was going to happen with that. The rest of the board had no idea. Yet the entire neighbor of council gets placed in the meeting. So what you have here right now is this. This neighborhood council can agree tonight that we will not hold any meetings down in our downstairs office until it gets redressed to the satisfaction of DOD. 
Once that's done, there's no reason for us to remain under exhaustive efforts. I and mean, then we can go on to being the best neighborhood council on the west side. So we should be immediately removed from DE and reinstated. And at the same time, Don really needs to make a procedure of policy for how this is going to be handled. And if they want us to do something, they should let us know. Straight on. Send us an email. Call us up. Let us know. The other last thing that I want to say is that I don't want to take a lot of shots at Darren, but I can't talk to them. You call your office and you say, send me an email, I don't have time to talk. I send emails, you don't respond to all of them, you only respond to part of them. I understand that there's a lot of other people, I absolutely understand. But it, sometimes you're our lawyer, you represent us. Sometimes we need to talk to our lawyer. You need to take our calls, answer the phone, call us back, or maybe have a meeting. We're not going to barrage you with stuff. If you want to limit it just to the chair or the vice chair, okay. Make everybody who has a question for the city attorney goes to us so you don't have to feel a lot of But right now, you're probably you feeling talk. more I'm emails gonna, gonna than interrupt. you would if you could take no, it just I'm, to tell I'm going to interrupt because you did ask me to stay for a little bit. As I mentioned before, I had to go. All right. Well, but I'm done. I, I, I wanted you to hear that. this. I respond constantly to your emails. You just repeat the same thing over and over. I'm only going to say things one time. And that is, comply with the DOD recommendations. It's as simple as that. We don't have them in writing, dude. Did you not I, catch I, that part? I've conveyed that to you in writing as well. The board knows. Have it up here. But you should have conveyed it to okay, us. So that should have told us what to do. Back. Sorry. Okay. I just Tom, made a Tom, thank you. Thank you. I think you've spent enough something. time. Uh, yes, Rosie, go ahead. Yes, Rosie. How do you know there's a false allegation? Also, on May the 2nd, Darren Martinez sent an email to every single board member that stated that all future board and committee meetings need to be held upstairs in the second floor conference room next door to Mike Bonnet's office. Okay. Jamie. I would like to move to adjourn. I love that. Do I have a second? Yes, yes, I have second. second, third, yes. fourth. Is anybody objecting to it? No. No. Excellent. So we're going to take a couple of minutes, just take a breather, go out the door, watch the rollerbladers, you know, take a kickback, and put some music on, a little soothing music. Oh, the chair. And be careful, or they may be. Uh, like spiders? How long a break, Jay? Huh? How long a break? A couple of minutes, just to let everybody stretch and kind of. Okay. I don't I don't care what it has. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. hey, go, go through the um, and just 